I've searched the world But it couldn't fill me An empty place and Treasures of fear Never Satisfied hearing you love. And oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better. I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you see them all, and you still call me free. Cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. Not a place where your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, it's nothing better than you. There's nothing.
turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the Storm surrounding me, let it break at your name and still call the sea to still the rage in me to still every wave at your name and Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus. Silence here, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. And breathe, call these bones to live, call these lungs to sing once again. I will praise Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You Shadows can't deny your name cannot be overcome. Your name is alive forever and to die. Your name cannot be overcome. And Jesus, Jesus, you wake the darkness tremble. Shadows can't deny your name cannot be overcome. Your name is alive, forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is alive, let the shadows can't deny. Your Oh, Jesus, Jesus. 
Hey there, Neighborhood Church. Thanks for joining us today for Church at Home. Hey, as we wrap up the year and head into a new one, we want, to, we want you to stay in the loop with everything coming up here at Neighborhood Church. This January is bringing tons of opportunities for you to connect, grow, and serve with us as we follow Jesus together. To do so, stay tuned at ncvisalia.com, follow us on social media, or download the NC app on your phone or device. Next Sunday, January 3rd, we will continue to meet online until we kick off outdoor services again on Sunday, January 10th with brand new service times of 10 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. So sleep in, bundle up, and join us online for Church at Home next week. Thank you so much to everyone who continues to give to the mission of Neighborhood Church. It's because of your generosity that we are able to be for Visalia in so many different ways. We can't wait to partner with you in 2021 to love our friends, neighbors, and the entire Visalia community. There are two ways you can give online today. You can head to ncvisalia.com give, or you can text ncvisalia to 77977. Now we're going to start a two-week teaching series that we're calling Looking Back, Looking Forward. Let's go check it out. Hey neighborhood, thanks for hanging out with us on the last Sunday of 2020. A very crazy year that I think most people are quite ready to put in the rearview mirror. As we stand here at the end of 2020 and on the precipice of 2021, we thought it would be appropriate to do a little two week series we're calling Looking Back, Looking Forward. Here's why. The end of December is always a time of reflection. We see tons of top 10 lists detailing the best movies, music, and moments of the prior year online. And on a personal level, we also recall our own ups and downs over the past 12 months. We remember formative life experiences. We think back to the people who impacted our lives for better and for worse. The end of December is a time we look back, but it's also a time we look forward. We look forward to a new year and with that new possibilities new opportunities, a new chapter in our lives. We're in that unique little moment of each year where we are simultaneously looking back and looking forward. Today, on the last Sunday of the year, I'd like for us to look back because 2020 has been an absolutely wild ride. And when I reflect on my own experience this year, I think of numerous milestones, some good, some bad, and, and well, some just plain weird. For instance, I've been crunching some of my 2020 numbers. 10 months since we went into lockdown last March. 20 pounds I've gained this year from stress eating and ordering too much DoorDash. Whoopsie. 50 is the estimated number of Popeye's spicy chicken sandwiches I consumed from DoorDash this year. Uh, that 20 pounds isn't much of a surprise considering that milestone. $379 is the amount of money I wasted on a Disneyland annual pass right before the pandemic hit. Oh, that one stings. 11 is the number of masks I lost, misplaced, and had to replace over the past year. At least, oh, it's got to be 1,000. This is the number of times I had to walk back to my car because I forgot to grab my mask. 500 or more is the amount of times I started a sentence with the phrase, you know, when this is all over. And lastly, 150 plus is the amount of friends and family members on both sides of the political and cultural spectrum that I had to unfollow this year on social media. Too much drama for me this year. Thank you very much. Now, of course, I'm being a bit silly here, but on a serious note, this has truly been a hard year for our world. I don't want to make light of some of the very real struggles some of you have faced. But as I look back on this year, I'm reminded of something kind of crazy. When you live your life with Jesus, good things can come out of even the worst situations. I mean, just look at all the amazing things we've done together as a church in 2020. In a year defined by lockdowns and restrictions, you still found ways to be for Visalia. You came together, partnering with Jesus to make good things come out of a bad situation. Let me just remind you of what that looked like in 2020. 
When the pandemic kicked off, we operated as a day camp for the children of essential workers. We also came together to provide weekly drive through family fun packs for our community. For five weeks, we partnered with CityServe to help transport and distribute food to families in need. We did a cookie drive for essential workers, and you all brought in literally thousands of cookies. We partnered with Child Welfare Services to provide Easter baskets for kids in foster care. We partnered with Young Lives to provide Mother's Day gifts for teen moms. We sent gifts to the Tulare County Health and Human Services COVID Task Force nurses. We partnered with Cahuilla Delta and Tulare Health to host a free drive through COVID testing right here in our parking lot. We raised $20,000 for our Love Your Neighbor Fund that went directly to families in crisis. We raised $30,000 during our Give, Serve, Love campaign for our community nonprofit partners. We hosted outdoor family movie nights and Wednesday night food truck dinners, a socially distant trunk or treat for our city. We hosted our annual Christmas store event and we were able to serve 111 families, helping them buy gifts for their collective 305 children. Just recently, our drive through Christmas Light Spectacular saw 1,000 cars swing through our campus. And to top it all off, this year we baptized 28 people. Isn't that amazing? When we look back on 2020, yes, it's been hard, but with Jesus, we've seen good come from bad. There's still so much to celebrate. And yet, in the midst of that celebration, I think it's still important for us to acknowledge it's been a very hard and sad year. There's been loss of life, loss of livelihood, and loss of experiences. When we look back on this year, yes, there's good, but yes, there was also a lot of bad. And I think it's the same when we look back and reflect on our own personal past. When we look back, many times our memories are filled with pain, disappointment, and hardship. I mean, some of you guys had a rough childhood. Some of you experienced major disappointments in life. Some of you have experienced traumas so deep you're still fighting to get over them. The pain of our past, the pain of this difficult year, it can create an emotional and spiritual baggage that drags us down in the present and holds us back from our future. Now, at the risk of oversimplifying things, I want to present you with an idea as we close the year. I know that everyone has a different story, different circumstances, and there's rarely a one-size-fits-all solution to the problems of life. But at Neighborhood, as we follow Jesus together, as we live our lives empowered by God's Spirit, we believe there are nuggets of divine wisdom out there that truly help us move our lives forward. Wisdom that helps us become the best version of ourselves, the people God has created us to be. And if you look at God's story across scripture, I think you'll find one piece of divine wisdom that is very relevant as we wrap up this difficult year. Here it is. Here's the one thing I want to remind you today. Your past doesn't define you. It refines you. Your past doesn't define you. It refines you. The pain of your past, the mistakes you've made, the regrets you have, these things don't need to define you. Sure, they shape us, they grow us, and they create spiritual tensions we have to manage. But ultimately, when we live a Jesus-centered lifestyle, our past doesn't get the final word. Did you know that when you follow in the way of Jesus, you become a new person? You still have imperfections, yes. You still have baggage to carry, yes. But in Jesus, you receive a new identity and a new lifestyle that completely transcends the brokenness of your past. In Jesus, your past no longer defines you. Through Jesus, I mean, I've seen convicts become caretakers. I've seen victims become victorious. I've seen tiny glimpses of heaven on earth in the transformed hearts of real people, just like you and me. An early Christian leader named Paul once wrote, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. When you walk in the footsteps of Jesus, you become a new creation. Now, it's not overnight. It's not in a way that strips you of your distinctive personality and life experience. 
but in a way where you get better and better each day. You find yourself becoming more compassionate, more aware, more hopeful, joyful, patient, and peaceful. Your past doesn't define you. It refines you. So as we look back at the difficulties of 2020 and the hardship we endured as individuals, a church community, a city, a country, a world, whatever, we need to remember that 2020 doesn't define us. We should take time to mourn our losses. Absolutely. We should reflect on our mistakes and grieve our difficulties. But we can't stay here. Former U.S. President Lyndon B. Johnson once said, We can draw lessons from the past, but we cannot live in it. Pastor and author Rick Warren once wrote, We are products of our past, but we don't have to be prisoners of it. Now, I know this message can be hard to hear. Some of you are already feeling a bit defensive right now. Uh, Some of you might even be ready to change the channel on me right in this moment. You might be saying, Jordan, who are you to tell me my past doesn't define me? You have no idea what I've experienced. You have no clue what kind of pain I've faced. You don't know the agony I've experienced this year. And listen, I, I get it. Some of you in 2020 have lost loved ones. Some of you in 2020 have gone broke. Some of you have experienced trauma that the rest of us will never be able to empathize with. So in light of your past, maybe right now you think this message is lacking in substance and real world application. But let me just say this. The absolute last thing we ever want to do at Neighborhood Church is try to offer up trite platitudes and cute cliches. We never want to try and offer simplistic answers to the difficult questions of life. So when we say things like your past doesn't define you, it refines you. Yes, it rhymes. Yes, it's pithy. But also, yes, we truly believe this is divine wisdom. It's simple, but it's not simplistic. It's easy to understand, but it takes a lifetime of trial and error to embrace. So if you're listening today and you're not quite buying it so far, just stick with me for a few minutes. Throughout this difficult year, there's a passage of scripture we've shared multiple times at Neighborhood Church. It comes from a letter written to the early Christians of the first century. It was written by James, the half-brother of Jesus and a major leader of the early church. He wrote this to a community of people experiencing numerous hardships. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. James wrote that we can find joy even in the midst of difficulty because we know the trials of life refine us. They teach us. They strengthen us. They make us resilient. You might even echo the old saying, what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. One Our struggles give us a broader sense of reality and a deeper sense of self-awareness. Two, our struggles take us outside of our comfort zone. Three, our struggles reveal a resilience within ourselves we didn't know about. Four, our struggles give us the wisdom and experience to navigate future difficulties. And five, our struggles help us relate to and empathize with our fellow human beings. For these reasons, and so many more, the perseverance we build on as we experience the difficulties of life ultimately can help us become more emotionally resilient and spiritually stronger. This is what James was saying to the early Christians. The struggles of their past and present didn't define them. It was refining them through the Spirit of God as given through Jesus Christ. And this is a major theme you'll find from the front to the back of God's story in the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, we see that God is in the business of redemption. God is in the business of bringing good out of even the worst situations. God is in the business of taking lemons and making lemonade. Now, we don't have time to examine every example, but as we wrap up today, Here's a quick flyover we see in the biblical narrative. Here are some folks who weren't defined by their past. They were refined by it and empowered to do great things. In Genesis, 
Abraham went from being a roaming pagan nomad to the father of a great nation. In Exodus, Moses went from a stuttering nobody to a great spiritual leader. Later in the Old Testament, we see a boy named David who went from being a lowly shepherd to a powerful king. A poor, young, ethnic minority named Esther went from being an exile to a queen and rescuer of her people. In the New Testament, Mary went from a teenage girl in a backwater town to the mother of the Messiah. Peter and the disciples of Jesus went from blue-collar workers to history makers. And the Apostle Paul went from being a religious extremist to a world-changing author. If some of those names don't sound familiar, check out their stories sometime. In them, you'll see imperfect people who persevere through pain and hardship and difficult circumstances to change the world. Now, we all might not become history makers or world changers, but when we come to Jesus, he brings good out of the bad. As Paul once wrote, We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Notice Paul doesn't say, in God, all things are good. Life is hard. A relationship with Jesus doesn't exempt us from pain and suffering in this world. But Paul says, in all things, the good, the bad, the ugly, God is working for our ultimate good. Our past doesn't define us, it refines us. So as we take one last moment to look back on 2020, ask yourself, this year, what were my good moments? What were my bad moments? And now, how can I partner up with Jesus to learn from my experiences this year and step into tomorrow stronger, more resilient, more compassionate, and more hopeful for the future? And if you haven't yet turned to Jesus, if you haven't experienced the great divine adventure of following him, Maybe this year is the time to start. Maybe this year is the year to let Jesus transform your life and turn your world upside down in the best possible way imaginable. This week, we looked back. And next week, the first Sunday of 2021, we will explore what it looks like to look forward. We'll also be sharing some helpful resources here in the next few weeks to help you hit the ground running this year. So stay tuned. Neighborhood Church, on the last Sunday of 2020, we leave you with one final quote from St. Teresa. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow has not yet come. We only have today. Let us begin. Neighborhood Church, we love you so much. We can't wait to see you next year.